Dobro večer svima. Hvala vam što ste došli da čujete predavanje profesora Injakija. Kao što znate, ovo je već drugo večer kako profesor predaje o španskoj muzici, o što je o savjevanoj muzici i o saradnji sa raznim kompozitorima. Večeras će da upravo priča i nastavi onu priču od juče. Pričat će o o novim kompozicijama koje su nastave za harmoniku u Španiji, kao i o saradnji sa različitim kompozitorima i o što u saradnji u svetu harmonike kako ona treba da napreduje i dalje da raste i kako treba da se razvija naš sobstveni um kroz sviranje harmonike. Ovom prilikom bi još jednom pozdravio profesora i zahvala bi mu se što je uopšte pristao da dođe u Niš da drži seminar. I evo sad pozivam profesora da poče svoje predavanje, a mi ćemo sa nestrpenjem očekivati svaku njegovu reč. So, thank you very much for coming everybody to this second day speaking about the accordion, the contemporary music and all these things. So, today I would divide this uh, meeting in two, in two parts. The first part is speaking, I will speak about um, chamber music. You know, yesterday we, was speaking, we were speaking about collaborations and one of the most important things was chamber music. Uh, uh, as, as we told, during these days you have, you have seen that uh, there are many open doors, many possibilities to develop as a player when you start to sound like a little bit like one violin, one clarinet, one cellist. So uh, that it's a really a great experience. So today we will, we will speak and we will listen and we will see some scores first for accordion and piano, Accentus of Jesus Torres. It's a wonderful piece. First we just will listen after I will speak about, okay? Um, <coughs> Sonua of Gabriel Ercoreca, which was written uh, just in the opposite way of Accentus. Okay? Um, let's see, after we will, we will see one piece for accordion and saxophone, also one piece for accordion and cello, and maybe one piece for accordion and soprano. All of them are from Spanish composers, Spanish and Basque composers, and <clears throat> I can try to play also some short moments here to show you how I work it in the, in the past, these pieces, when I start to collaborate in chamber music. So let's see this first piece of Jesus Torres, Accentus, just a few minutes, okay? Thank you. 
can see uh, this score, it's really incredible piece. It's very, very good music. So, uh, really, uh, the piano player is a wonderful piano player, it's Miguel Duarte. Uh, and we, in that time, we made a very good chamber music group, in my opinion, because we are independent of how, how can how can work the piece in one moment or others. The base of the work was really chamber music. So every time we are just speaking and about the balance, about the articulations, attacks, tempos, and everything is just one, like one new sound between accordion and piano. What happened here is the piano is like a percussion instrument. In different moments, it sounds like marimba or vibraphono or, I don't know, glockenspiel or something like that. So, um, what mm, that means that accordion is like the um, like the the bellow of the piano. So when the resonance comes from the from the piano, the accordion has the possibility to project the sound even more, and that is really wonderful because the sound is brilliant. And also he works a lot the the unisono, you know, uh, same tones. But always the accordion is playing in the higher or lower notes. So it's like a boom at the same time. So the, the piece has an, one NG inside, that is the hoquetus. Hoquetus is, you know, when it's working like a dialogue. So this is the engine of all the pieces. And around this piece, it's working, what, as you can see, uh, listen now, all these other things, subjects and themes and and sections. And what happened is that uh, really this engine, it starts little by little, but at, at, the, at the middle of the piece, there is one central part, about two, three pages, very fast, that all the time the accordion is playing with the piano uh, very fast. So, um, I think this is one of the pieces that really uh, surprised me a lot because I never thought that the piano and accordion couldn't work as well like it works here, in my opinion, of course. So, um, the next piece that I would like to show you, it works just in the opposite way of this. It's Sonyuma of Gabriel El Coreca, and he takes the different range of the accordion and the piano uh, the bellow and the so the, the piano is like bells, pam pam pam, and the, uh, the accordion is like a very big bellow. So um, this combined with different range of the tones, it makes a very explosive sound. You will see. Uh, at the beginning, it makes just with the accordion, combining different uh, effects and with the uh, progressive progressive chords in the piano. But after it starts to they start to speak and it starts to develop very very fast everything. So no, not very fast, quite but quite, quite. So let's see. I haven't the score. Sorry, but we can try to we can try to listen. Let's try. Let's see if I do fine.
So as, it, as you can see at the beginning of the piece, there, there, are, there is one kind of tremolo. That's quite strange because it goes very fast. And the problem here was that the composer was, as you can imagine, the piece is quite mysterious at the beginning. And after also, it's, it has some tension in this, in this way. So <clears throat> what the composer wants was a tremolo with below shade. But he, he wrote a lot of polyrhythmias. So the problem is that when you make below shade, you have maybe four or eight to do. So you cannot combine five with three or it's quite difficult because it will be, it will be not polyrhythmia. It can be or five or three, but not in the middle. So what I proposed here was <coughs> try to, to make a, a very fast ricochet and combine with, um, with these rhythmical things. So you make the attack. So really, he's going as fast that you can push the ribs wherever you want. Like if it will be. So it's not. Like without mellow shake, just just because it's quite fast. So this piece is another very very different beat, but piece, but very nice. But yeah. Professor, yeah. do we have to cooperate with all composers who wants to to uh, to write for accordion, for accordion, or just with the frozen? I don't know. Uh, the start of students, uh, maybe uh, or I don't know. I I have collaborated. With in, in that, that case, of course, I have collaborated with, with all the composers. Yes, because, uh, you know, yesterday we were speaking about collaborations also a little bit, and it's quite uh, interesting if you try to be in the side of the composers, uh, not in our side. For example, this, when you see the first time the score, you can see very easy, no, this is not possible to play. But it's a very big mistake, in my opinion. If you really try, finally you, you find one way quite uh, mysterious, quite new and really near of the original idea of the composer. So it is very important. Okay, so thank you. So the next piece that I would like to show you is uh, Dama from Jose Maria Sanchez Verdú. Uh, as I told you before, the pianist was Miguel I Duarte. And now the saxophonist is Jose Chosilguero. Uh, it's one of the most uh, interesting collaborations that I have had uh, with another uh, inst uh, instrumentist, with another player, uh, especially because the sound and the rhythm. We work in one trio, percussion, saxophone, accordion, and electroacoustic devices. And <clears throat> So the rhythm was, rhythm was very uh, strict with, with the percussionist, Jesus Mari Garmendia, and uh, we, we work a lot about polyrhythms and all these things. So the sound was terrible with Jose Chosiguero because he is really it's his obsession, and for me was incredible, amazing experience. So, <clears throat> for example, I discovered many different types of attacks we made some attacks with accordion, but in saxophone they have a lot and they can rewrite everything. So for me it was very, very interesting to try to, to learn every, every attack. Also the intensity of the sound, also the colors of the sound. I don't know, many, many things that, for example, we will see here in this piece the, the density of the sound, how the sound can be full or empty. It depends how you make the articulation, it depends how, I, how much I do, you, you can use. So let's see to, to listen this this piece, Damas of Jose Maria Sanchez Verdú.
example, this sound. This this sound is is very near for the of the saxophone, yeah. But usually, when I played before the first time with him, this C, I was like just. A <coughs> but he asked me to make a work a little bit more empty sound. So like. And with I. So it's near to untuning, but it's tuning. And what changes the color? It's more like ooh, ooh, yeah? More close. And near of the saxophone. So I never could imagine to do something like that if if I will not play with with him. So you will see another effect now that is really incredible how the composer was thinking about the tuning in the accordion. Because of course our, our instrument is tuning. We, we, we haven't to do anything. But it depends if you play with one wind instrument, why not? Sometimes you can just um, change the tuning to be a little bit more with him. It depends on the color that you want to get. Yeah? So let's see what you think about this. Just two minutes. down. It's not. It's this. So I have to change a little bit the tuning. No, it's, it's not written in the scores. Sometimes it is, because he asked for portamenti. But for example, this, no. This is about just music. Listening and you can understand how the saxophone works and you start to change the tuning. It's very few, but it's very important because in other cases you have a vibration, this tuning, and it's very nice. It's very ugly. So, sorry. Yes, now it's working. I, vibratos, stereos. Noises.
this is written, sportamenti, with accordion, but you have to graduate with the saxophonist, and the saxophonist with you. And it's uh, with two voices. He likes very much, Jose Maria Sanchez Verdú likes very much to use different registers for one portamenti. So for example, here he starts with this. He likes also do it with, for example, this is with 16-8. Why not with, with uh, 4 and 16? And he starts, for example, this. If you make a very, very short pressure to the bottom, it sounds... You, you put 16 and 4, but it sounds only 4. with the sound. And over it in, it's coming, in my opinion, from the collaboration with other, co other instrumentists, other, you know, instruments, especially, because all these ideas, it's very, very difficult that it came just playing accordion. So, <coughs> another interesting piece, in my opinion, is Keen, from Gabriel Ercoreca. Uh, his writing was, was written for accordion and cello. And I have here the score, I think. Yes. Um, King, it calls King because it's, it's a, in a little bit in, in the idea of the King Chinese instrument made wood and plays like, li like this, and the Shen like accordion. So the accordion is playing with very high notes and like uh, the breed of the Shen. And and the cello is playing like a very long notes, very low, and after a lot of pizzicatos. This is only just a creation motivation, but really the piece is it's very interesting in the harmony way, how it works, because it's very warm harmony, and the dynamics and the, mix, the, the connection with the cello is really very interesting. Um, so this is...
You can hear and listen and see that the score is in relation with the cult of China and this kind of sounds or Orient sounds. But uh, the harmony is quite traditional, so it's, it's a very interesting piece and very nice also. So now I was thinking in the second part to speak about the accordion solo pieces in the contemporary music, in, especially in Spain some very short selection about some pieces that I have make premieres and really very, I think, very different from the point of view that all of them can help us to enjoy and to understand and play better the contemporary music. So I think that the first piece that uh, I have here that and you can see a little bit is this Yuvia. This piece <coughs> This piece it's, it's written in very minimalist style. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, it was the premiere was in 1998 in Granada in the Festival of Music and Dance. Um, Sofia Martinez wrote the piece for in, homage, uh, in portrait to uh, Federico García Lorca, the, the writer, and uh, Manuel de Falla. So I, have, I always have the idea in this piece that it's like, because the poem speak about a little bit about this musical idea. So the idea that one piano will be open, completely open, without this, and it starts to rain very, very soft. So when the sound, when the, when the rain water uh, it's over the piano, it starts to sound something. And um, this is a little bit the idea of the piece. We can, I can show you, or maybe I can play just from there. A little bit the idea is this. Something like that. So it's it's very, very minimalist piece and very soft always. I think it's it's a very it's not uh, so difficult to play, but it's a little bit rare because as you can see here after hmm, here it starts to have some polyrhythmics things here, yeah, and um, <coughs> it's something like uh, four with three and this kind of of. Very nice things. So you have to work three and four, three and four every time. And this was, I think, the first time that really I had to work the polyrhythmic things. And I discovered that there is, it's very basic thing, but I didn't know. <laughs> 
that there is only one thing to make polyrhythmias. So if we have three, we have to divide, for example, in four, and every three mark. So the result is always one formula that we have to memorize. For example, three, four, or four, five, or five, six, So they are always perfect, always. And this was the first time that I had to work this. And it was very exciting for me. At, at the beginning, very hard, because my, my system of, of, do, of play polyrhythmias always was just thinking one, and now, ta -di -da, ta -di -da, now, ti -da 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 -da. oh no, it doesn't work again, no. <laughs> when I discovered this another basic thing, it was really very important for me. Uh, I have one piece that maybe I can show you. It's a very, very nice piece of Gabriel Ercoreca <laughs> that he used the polyrhythmias, but in much more difficult way than this, because he's working, for example, in two beats. First beat, just one note. Second beat, five in four. And in the bass, three in two for two beats. So it's not only that you have in one beat different polyrhythmias, so in the bass you have one other more. So you have three lines of polyrhythmias. When you really work the polyrhythmia very precise, you discover that there is one very close relation between the ring and, and the expression. And it cannot work at this level if you really don't find this connection. So, how to say it? It's the same of always. When the ring is in tempo, the expression is easier. You don't lose power. So it happened the same, but in my opinion, richer. Yes? So, for example, this is a very, very nice piece, very melodic. It doesn't look that you are thinking in numbers, but really, it's quite, uh, quite complicated polyrhythmia things. doesn't look that you are working in other things, vertical things, but really it works very, very interesting because the melody, it sounds like a very free melody, but at the same time, the compose has the control of the expression, but the melody is free when you listen. Okay, so it's a very interesting piece. Cuatro diferencias of Gabriel Coreca. Another interesting piece, in my opinion, uh, is the uh, ISPI of uh, Surinje Fernandez de Arena Barrena. We can, I think, yes, we can see the score and we can. Yeah, okay, just a moment.
it's it's a very it's it's a piece that it works. How to say it? It's like a like a flash of light. Yeah. So she she the idea it comes from the light, like a point of light, and she she makes a, she, she compare the, the the density of the light. For example, when you open one window, just in the corner, it came some some light or not. It depends how you close, and it depends how how the density of the sound she can she imagine she gives to the sound. So the sound is going up, down, opening, closing. Sometimes very very close, and sometimes at the beginning is just one point. So uh, she she wrote one one series very big like um, a spectral music from one note, all the harmonics, and with all these harmonics she makes the series and it's the result of the sounds that we have. Okay? So this, the, the way of, of the work of the sound and the structure of the piece has, are the most important things in each piece. Okay? Another very interesting piece is Astarnak. This last piece, Ispi of Surini Fernandez Guerrera Barrena, is the same composer who wrote this year Luma, uh, this uh, quarter tone accordion piece. Uh, it's a very amazing work. So now we can listen a little bit a Starnak of Ramon Azcano. It's a great piece. the first piece that he wrote for accordion and after this he made another piece that it calls Itam that is for accordion and orchestra. Tomorrow we will see the accordion concertos and this piece Itam is it's the same piece but and it sounds very similar but the, how to use the materials are completely different. Because, for example, in this first part, here, tempo is something like 72 or 78 or something like that. Uh, but in the orchestra is 60 or 63 or something. And the, the idea is that this melody is running from all the orchestra. It starts with the violin and after with the accordion. First flutes, after violin, after accordion and after the dialogue between everybody. And it's a it's very, very exciting work, how he made the orchestration of this piece. Also with percussion and with uh, very interesting sounds. So another very nice, no, no, I, don't, I don't know if nice is the, the best word. It's quite a strong, it's quite a strong piece. And uh, it's a piece of uh, Felix Ibarrondo that it calls Arinka. Uh, this piece is, um, you know, as accordionists, we have some ideas as a classical players also, 
that, for example, when we make one accent, we dynamic. In, normally, it's tam, but it's not tam, tam. No, this is very strange. Or when we speak about balance, we want that the melody will sound much more than the bass, but. It's quite strange that you use the melody as a timbre to make richer the bass. Or, I don't know, for example, he likes a lot the archaic sounds, yes? So uh, he makes some kind of sound with the accordion, and the objective is not to get a lot of sound. It's just to listen some kind of sound that he remember, for example, the wood, something like yeah, there are many, many things like this that uh, are very interesting in Arinka. So let's go, I can play some fragments. Uh, also, he likes to broke the sound because he's a very, he's such a very deep composer and his, his sound is painful sometimes. And he, he tried to make pain sometimes through range or just because it's very obsession obsessive material and he repeats and repeats and repeats. And other way very interesting is broke the sound. So for example when he makes uh, this uh, yeah it's like pa, 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 yeah so uh, it happened the same for example we spoke before about the dynamics. He makes this at the beginning no, not exactly at the beginning, just after, makes not that is the, the first beat is tira. No, he makes and there is the beat. But many times he used just the opposite way to make accent, for example. You can start to feel it's quite painful sound. Yeah? L let's see just the beginning. And how he makes a big progression in the first three pages. And you don't think that really he will get more power, but he will take. So it's incredible, strong piece. So, for example, this part that I I spoke to you before about this archaic sound. Uh, he takes at the beginning of the last part.
It's very obsessive material. Every time, bam, 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 bam. So Ivarondo, for me, as you can see at the beginning, the highest notes are on the right. And when he wrote, he always said, maybe I, I have not composed well this piece, because it doesn't work as I thought. And it's, it's true, it doesn't thump, it doesn't, it didn't work like he thought. It works better. Because he had one idea about how to mix, how to to combine two hands, but at the end it's not about one hand and other hand. It's just one sound. What what he gets. And this is a surprise for him and for me. Because you are not listening, it's like a one boom, boom, everything together. Yeah? So it's very exciting this well, you are wrong. It's not about if it's nice or not nice, it's exciting piece in my opinion. Very we have to finish one very very interesting piece. And I will speak a little bit about all composers. Because all composers when you we have to, to, to collaborate for example with one composer who has 80, 85 years old. Um, for example now in Juan, Juan in Juan is a Catalonian composer from Spain and he has finished it just the day before come here, his concerto for accordion. Uh, he, he, he cannot, with this age, start to investigate really how it's the accordion, how much registers we have. There's the range, of course, but how much effects we can do, I don't know, textures about chords, about polyphony, everything. It's very, a, lot, a long time for him. He don't has time for this in the, that moment of his life. And it's normal. So in that case, we have we have to rebuild sometimes the pieces that they compose. And in this piece, Sonidos de la Tierra, it happens many times. Not many, not many, but sometimes two or three times that he had a very very interesting idea, but he don't know how to really put in the accordion. And he have, he had the intuition that it works, but really he didn't know how. So, for example, there is one part that in the piano was very easy because in the piano was like this, on in one hand. Yeah. Always white notes. And with the other hand, pom, ping, pom, ping, pom, pom. So we cannot do that. We cannot just take a no, no, or just, it's impossible. Well, with Jose Maria Sanchez Verdú, sometimes it's possible, but it's not a, some, a something exactly the exactly same language. So, uh, for that, I propose to make a very legato in left hand, like this. So we can combine with, for example, all notes on the right. working on the extremes of the range on the right hand. So we are going to listen a little bit this piece, please, because it's really a very, very nice. The, the original sound is coming from here. Yeah, it's a, a, a traditional song from Catalonia. And he, uh, Gin Yuan, when he was very child, he played first instrument accordion. You know, this small accordion, diatonic and so. Um, and he took this melody because of that. So let's go to, to uh, huh. just a moment. I have to, this is the score, yeah, but I have, just a moment, close all of this.
you can see that it works very special. It's very special. Um, yeah, yeah. It's a magic moment. It's, I like very much. So, uh, do you have any questions? No. Okay. Yes. Okay. First, uh, uh, professor, you, you when you play, you play with big power and energy. How you concentrate about the, the polyrhythmic and everything? How you focus? <laughs> Focus. But you know, the, the polyrhythmics are just work, nothing more. Every people can do it. Every people who can work. <laughs> but, but it's very easy, really. It's not complicated. It's just uh, now it. At the, I didn't know. When I didn't know, uh, I really, when you don't make the polyrhythmia, you lost a lot of power. In the in the connection between especially the for example the, the expression, the melody and the, the, the rhythmical sense and even the character of course. You know the, the score always is one code, no more. <coughs> and uh, through this code the, the compose try to arrive to us. So we have to try to, to, to read this code, imagine what was the original idea of him, but don't forget that it's just a code. So he sings something here and he must put in the paper. He, if he doesn't put in the paper, we cannot know how he thinks. But it's just a quote. This is the reason because many times composers, I don't know, write one something in classical music, for example, no? Uh, It's, it's written one, two. But we make one. Yeah? So we don't make. We make. So it's, it's the. Because we. I think that is the expression, the original expression of this impulse to the beginning of the piece. The character, everything is coming from this code. Do you have? What is that piece? This piece is Soler. One incredible compose, Spanish incredible compose, a student of Escarlati, who lives in the 17th century. And it's really very, very. He has around 95 or 100 sonatas. <coughs> And it's it's amazing composed because he really Scarlatti he he writes always two materials <laughs> or not always but many times two materials and after second part of the sonata it's just another tonality yeah. and some small uh, develop but Soler likes to have maybe three four or even five different materials in one sonata and all of them with a very um, original develop. And very, very nice spirit of the music, very fresh, very cantabile always. It's a very interesting composer. Hmm. Do you search? Yeah, yeah, I can tell you how. Uh, can you tell us something about your uh, experience with uh, Sofia Gubaidulina? Okay, with Sofia Gubaidulina, I think there are many people who have collaborated with her. For example, here, Nikola Tanaskovic. He played for her the profundis of Sofia Guaidolina. And really, she likes very much how Nicola played. Uh, Sofia is a, it's a very, very warm person. But um, she has, she's one of the composers who has very, very clear, of course, what she wants. So sometimes it's very difficult to know it, what really you want at the end of the piece. But she knows perfectly when she wrote what will be the result final, the final result. And, and when she listens something that she likes very much, the, the way of expression, uh, even with 84 years, she tried to go to the concerts, invite to their home and many things. And what, what it happens with Sofia was that she went, she came to, to work with, uh, to, no, she, she went to San Sebastian to, to work, not to work, to listen 
uh, under the scene of Scorpio that I played with the Liverpool Orchestra and Vasily Petrenko, maestro. And what happened is that she likes the, the, the performance. So she invites uh, to go to her home. I, I was working with her and I proposed her. So this piece is very big. I cannot take 100 persons with me every time. So why we don't find one way to use this melody that I like very, very much. So, you know, it has a lot of, some cadences and one is a, This way, she's um, developing this melody more and more, yeah. And I propose why why don't we don't use this cadenza like a one piece? And she she asked me, okay, play please. Let's see if it works. Okay, it works. So we will do it and we do. It. And after that, she she came to Madrid, to Barcelona, to different places to to hear some of the of the concerts that I have given. Given the, also the recording of Seven Wars, she was with us. So she she enjoyed listening her music and she tried to be there always. Hmm. Very very normal person. Very 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 normal. Like her music. Yeah, not the special. <laughs> yeah, but of course very rich person the human sense. So, somebody has more questions? Uh, do you have stage fright and how do you deal with it? If I ha have what? Stage fright. What is it? Drama. Drama. Afraid. Ah, ah I stage fright. Stage. Stage. Not now. <laughs> A little bit old. Fear. You mean fear yes. in the stage. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> no. We have many hours of study. We cannot have this. But I have, of course, like everybody, uh, tension because you want to. You have that there is a lot of people, and you, you have, you want to do it very, very well. But not just what you have studied. Just you want that it it works. Let's see what what we what we'll do to works, but. Uh, this is the power that we need when you go to the stage, in my opinion. Just let's go to do it. And uh, I like this experience. Also, even this tension I like before the concert. And especially after, when it goes, you are very, very powerful and, and full of energy. So, but no, but, but of course, when I was young, I had uh, some problems in, th in this way because I wanted, I wanted to play so so good that I never play normal. <laughs> so that was, I think that it was because I start very very later. I start with 14 years old. So with 16 years I was in clinical, so just two years playing accordion. So I I knew how to to do something, but I, I haven't. I had the time to, to do it, but I I could I wanted to do it, so it was always a little bit frustrating for me till 20 years something like that. Professor, you want to know how you put your accordion? Uh, what is the best way for us to put accordion in the, uh, on the legs? On the legs, yes. The way of playing. Of, of playing. Arms and as you as as we told yesterday, without without, uh, without this, yes. I don't know. It depends of. I cannot tell you one formula. You know, I don't know. Uh, no, I. I don't. I tried to find another way different than to play like this. You know, because many times we have a pain here. Or we are like this, or we are like this. So I try to 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 do a one another system of straps just to to be like a little bit like this and 
attack and use this like this, no? Like in tennis, little bit. Like Djokovic. <laughs> so yeah, and to be very free on the on the left. Or like Nadal. Like Nadal. Yes. Okay, so thank you very much, Isabel. Okay? So see you tomorrow. Yes, sir, I, I ah, question. okay, yeah, please. Uh, when we talk about contemporary music, uh, for example, uh, what, what should be our focus when, when we take something contemporary uh, to play and we, we haven't heard earlier that, that piece? The score. The score? Yes, the score is the focus always. You have to be very, very... You have to, to, to look at the details every details. You have to imagine conducting the score. And why not with a top of expression? And uh, also the many times there are many new, not only harmonies, also effects, sounds, timbers, that if you see the score, you can imagine, wow, how it sound is? Or how much energy in this point? On mm -hmm. what extreme range? Or what crazy tempo? Of what I don't know what uh, combined co how he combines right and left hand because it's very difficult or just because it's very strange and you start to imagine how it works. So this is for me when I see one one classical repertoire, there is one way to look this score, and when you see the uh, contemporary repertoire, there is another way to look this, the score. In my opinion. Not very different, of course, but you, you have to just to, to, to be able to, to, to know how you have a different ranges, a different register, different uh, uh, rhythms, different dynamics that you can use more. And they are there, not, not in the other music. Mm. So thank you very much. See you tomorrow.